Welcome trainers! Today, we'll be looking into a recent announcement from Niantic, stating that January's Community Day will feature the Generation 2 starter Pokemon, Totodile. Before I get into the video, I just want to say a big thanks for watching. This is a brand new channel with the goal of covering all things Pokemon Go related, so if this type of content interests you, please give this video a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can be notified every time I upload new videos. Lastly, I would absolutely love to hear any and all feedback you guys have for me. If you have any tips or suggestions on how I can improve my videos going forward, I'm all ears. With that being said, let's go ahead and talk community day. Now if you've been playing Pokemon Go for the past few months, this announcement may not come as a surprise to you as Niantic has been consistently giving us starter Pokemon as community day Pokemon every other month. We had Bulbasaur in March, Mareep in April, Charmander in May, Larvitar in June, Squirtle in July, Eevee in August, Chikorita in September, Beldum in October, Cyndaquil in November, a 2018 mashup in December, and now the final Gen 2 starter, Totodile, in January. I'll save future Community Day predictions for another video, but this pattern leaves us on track to have the first Gen 3 starter Community Day in March. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the announcement. The Community Day will be on January 12th, 2019 at 2 p.m. Eastern Time and will run for the typical 3 hour window until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. If you are joining us from outside the US, please check the official Community Day announcement to find out what time the event will be running for you. I'll be sure to include a link in the description of this video. Like every other Community Day, we'll be getting some sweet Community Day bonuses. First, and the most obvious, will be the increased Totodile spawns in the wild, along with an increased chance of finding a shiny Totodile. Totodile shiny isn't as extreme as others, but it's certainly more noticeable than some such as Gengar's. Kinda has an Aquaman-esque color scheme, and I'll personally be looking forward to adding it to my collection. The second bonus will be 1 4th egg hatching distance, which is what I'm the most excited about. With the recently added Gen 4 Pokemon to eggs, along with the new shiny Pokemon and eggs, this will be a fantastic opportunity to get out there and hatch as many eggs as you can. If you can grab some super incubators, you'll be hatching eggs left and right and maximizing what you get out of this event. Be sure to keep earning your daily 50 coins from taking gems for the next few weeks so that you can save up for the community day box when it launches in game. It typically includes a decent amount of super incubators. If you have the coins now, I would actually recommend going ahead and purchasing the holiday ultra box as this is probably the best ultra box that has come out to date. It costs 1480 coins and includes 12 super incubators, 10 lucky eggs, 14 premium raid passes, and 10 star pieces, leaving you totally ready for the 3 hour community day window. The third bonus will be 3 hour lures, which is standard with every community day. If you don't have any lures, I wouldn't stress too much about buying any, as I'm sure there will be others out and about dropping lures. Even without lures, you will find plenty of totodiles out in the wild, so long as you play in a fairly populated or high spawn area. If you decide to drop lures, make sure you drop them after the event starts so that they last the full 3 hours instead of just 30 minutes. On community day, make sure you don't complete any research tasks before the event starts, because once it does, all of those tasks are going to involve catching 3 totodile. The rewards for these will likely include 500 stardust, 2 ultra balls, 5 great balls, and 2 pineapp berries. Speaking of pineapp berries, make sure you start saving up on berries now as you'll want to have plenty once community day arrives. Last but not least, all Totodile evolved to their final evolution for Alligator during the event will learn a community day exclusive move which is more than likely going to be Hydro Cannon. One final tip for the event itself is to do everything you can to maximize what you get out of it. This includes hatching as many eggs as you can, using lucky eggs and star pieces, using incense if you have them, and if you bought one, using a go plus, a gotcha, or a pokeball plus so that you can make your playing a little more efficient once the 3 hour window hits. With the event details out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about Totodile and its evolutions. Totodile is a water type Pokemon with a max CP of 1131. Totodile is vulnerable to electric and grass type moves, and Totodile is boosted by rainy weather. Totodile's best moveset is Water Gun and Water Pulse. With such a low maximum CP, I don't think Totodile on its own will have any usability in the Great League for PvP, so I would go ahead and make sure you evolve all of your high level and high IV Totodiles before the event is over. Unless of course you're holding onto a shiny variant for collection purposes. Croconaw is also a water type Pokemon with a max CP of 1722. 
Carcanal is vulnerable to electric and grass type moves, and Carcanal is boosted by rainy weather. Carcanal's best moveset is also Water Gun and Water Pulse. Although its CP is low enough that it could potentially be used in the Great League, there are so many other fantastic water types in the game that it just gets outclassed. Similar to Totodile, I would really hold on to it for shiny and collection purposes only. Now let's talk for Alligator and its potential Community Day move. Feraligatr is a water type Pokemon with a max CP of 2857. Feraligatr is vulnerable to electric and grass type moves and is boosted by rainy weather. Feraligatr's best moveset is Waterfall and Hydro Pump as of right now, but would become Waterfall and Hydro Cannon if that's the move it ends up getting. As an attacker, when looking at other water type Pokemon with a double water type moveset, Feraligatr currently sits at 12th in terms of DPS, or damage per second, and gets outclassed by too many other water types to be considered useful. When you consider him from a DPS times TDO, total damage output standpoint, he comes up to 9th, but is still largely outclassed by too many other water type Pokemon. With a 205 attack stat, 188 defense stat, 198 stamina stat, he's actually a pretty well rounded Pokemon, but he's being held back by the lack of a community day move right now. Should Feraligatr receive the move Hydro Cannon, this would actually move him up quite a bit in the ranks. Feraligatr would then have a better moveset than most water types in the game, putting him at the number 2 spot in terms of water type DPS. This chart also shows Swampert with potentially receiving Hydro Cannon, but that hasn't happened yet, so we're going to disregard that for now. When you consider the stats of every other water type Pokemon, there are actually several others who out tank for Alligator and are thus able to put out more damage. So I think in the end he would end up being comparable to a Gyarados, uh, maybe Swampert, or even Vaporeon once all factors are considered. Needless to say, he'll be moving up in the ranks quite a bit after Community Day arrives. Be on the lookout for a future Totodile video once this Community Day move is actually confirmed. But until then, how do you guys feel about it? What are you most excited about? Are you looking forward to Aquaman Shiny Totodile and expanding your Shiny collection? Or having another exclusive move? Or if you're like me, maybe you're just excited about the 1 4th egg hatching distance. Let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear what your take on this Community Day is. Last but not least, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're a Pokemon Go player and want to stay up to date on the latest in Pokemon Go. With this being my first YouTube video ever, I'd absolutely love to hear feedback and even video requests in the comments. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time and thanks for watching.